Hi everybody, this is Electrified Veronica. Welcome back to our Jeep conversion project. Today is a very exciting day because we're getting ready to start the heart of the project and we really have something fun to show you. Are you ready? As most of you know, we are converting this 99 Jeep Wrangler into electric. And what you can see here are all the main components. So let's walk a little bit through each of these components and understand what they're doing. So our battery pack is around 60 kilowatt hours and is spread out into seven modules throughout the Jeep. Four of the modules go into this front section where the engine used to be. Then these two modules will be mounted underneath the Jeep right here. And then there is one module in the rear that we put right where the gas tank used to be. This beautiful piece here is the electric motor, the inverter on top, and the speed reducer. This gearbox here will be connected to the stock transfer case. From the stock transfer case, we will have two drive shafts going into the front differential and the rear differential. Each of these battery modules will have a battery management system, a BMS like this one. There is one master and there is another six satellites for altogether seven modules. Each of these little BMS modules monitors each individual cell voltage plus four temperatures per module. Each of these little BMS modules communicate with the BCU the vehicle control unit. The VCU is the brain of the electric powertrain and it determines how all these components work together. The VCU also talks with the user interface which we have right here. This is where we will put the Jeep into park, reverse, neutral and drive. And this little display here will allow us to monitor the powertrain performance. We'll see the cell voltages, the temperatures, the state of charge of the battery and many other things on here. The last component that we have here is the onboard charger and DC-DC converter. The onboard charger will allow us to charge the battery in the Jeep from AC level one and two power. And the DC-DC converter that is also part of this little box here will allow us to convert the 400 volts coming from the high voltage battery pack into the 12 volts that is needed for all the low voltage devices. Typical low voltage devices are headlights, turn signals, radio and things like this. So what you cannot see in this setup right now are all the high voltage cables that we're using to connect the battery modules, the low voltage wires and cables that go to the headlights and all these things, as well as the hoses that we need for the cooling and heating system. More details and all that stuff comes up in following videos. So we often get questions about how are we going to do the mechanical integration of the electric motor, the speed reducer, and the stock transfer case. So what we did is in CAD, we designed a coupler and 3D printed it for fit up sake that will mount between the stock transfer case and the output of the gearbox. We'll get a spline shaft that will go from one to the other, and then we will have a CNC block of aluminum or a laminated aluminum plate adapter made that will then go between these two pieces of components and mount them together. We will then get some custom drive shafts made for the output of the transfer case to go to the front, to go to the rear, and this will allow us to have the typical two-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive high, neutral, or four-wheel drive low that is available in the stock Jeep. So the way we're gonna mount the e-motor, the transfer case, all inside of our Jeep, is we're gonna attach a cross brace here between the two frame members, and this adapter will then mount with some vibration mounts to that cross member, and then we will also use the stock engine mounts to connect to the back side of the e-motor and this will give us the support for having the e-motor and the transfer case in this general area. So our vision today is that we're going to make a subframe inside of this front part of the Jeep here that's going to go from the stock engine mount location up to this front cross member and this is where we're going to build the structure that will support the battery modules inside. So like we're going to do in the front, we're going to build a cross member subframe here in the back where the gas tank used to be in order to mount one of our battery modules in the back in this tank area. Same thing will happen here. We'll mount 
one module on each side of the drive shaft, giving us plenty of space for the drive shaft to go between them. One other key component that we don't have yet is we're going to add an electronic steering assist so that we don't have to utilize the hydraulic system from the stock Jeep. This will allow us to have assisted steering uh, that is also speed controlled. So we'll get the speed from the VCU and this will generate the assist for the steering when we need it at slow speeds. So of course, one of the less exciting parts of the rebuild project is kind of cleaning up all of the rough spots in this old vehicle. So we actually have a, a chassis that, and a body that's in pretty good shape, but it does have a little bit of rust spots in the footwells and stuff. So we're gonna take the time while it's all apart to clean it all up, maybe shake or can it a little bit to protect the metal and uh, clean everything up before we put the whole thing back together. And of course, one of the important things that we also wanna do is make sure that all of the critical suspension and braking components are in great shape before we put the Jeep back on the road. And this is one thing that makes the rotisserie very nice is that you can easily rotate the vehicle so that you can get to all of the different spots without bending over and, and especially my old back, uh, bending over all the time makes it a lot of fun. Getting it on the rotisserie was a, a little bit of a project, but uh, we'll have a follow-up video talking a little bit about uh, the tips and tricks and what not to do maybe when we mounted it on the rotisserie. So if you're interested in that, look for that video as well. So let's imagine the Jeep is all done. What happens when we're charging our battery in the Jeep? So let's imagine this goes into the wall, right? And now I'm plugging this into the charge receptacle of our Jeep. So the first thing that happens is that the AC power coming from our house goes into the onboard charger. And that's this guy right here. So as the onboard charger gets the AC power from the house, it converts it to high voltage DC, which is then connected through this cable to the battery and it charges up the battery. The onboard charger is also controlled by the VCU, which is connected to the battery management system. So they're all working in conjunction to charge the battery up in a very safe and controlled manner. It also then uses the DC to DC converter to charge up the 12 volt battery, which is also in the vehicle for supporting all of the 12 volt components in the vehicle. Now, what happens once the battery is charged and you wanna drive the Jeep? <laughs> So when I drive the Jeep, I obviously draw power from the high voltage battery pack to power the electric motor here. This electric motor runs on AC power, so we need this little inverter on top to convert the high voltage DC power coming from the battery pack into the AC power needed by the electric motor. Because it's high voltage and high current, we need a little bit bigger cables like the ones here to connect the high voltage battery pack with the inverter right here. This inverter and the electric motor need to be cooled. It's liquid cooling and it's in the same cooling loop like the onboard charger here. And of course, because we live here in Wisconsin where it can be very cold in the winter and very warm on days like today, we want to heat and cool the batteries as well. So we'll have a separate cooling loop, which we'll go into detail in a further video uh, for heating and cooling the battery packs uh, based on the outside temperature. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Laying out all these components and having them now sitting here made this project so much more real than before and we are so excited to work on it more and update you from time to time with our videos. If you have any questions or suggestions what you want to see in future videos please leave your comment in the comment section. Thanks so much talk to you soon.